BYD, it's the three letters which keep the world's most experienced auto executives up at night. The brand in Australia has gone from a trickle of imports to an absolute torrent of Chinese built EVs, even managing to outsell Tesla in the first month of 2024. But this car here, the SEAL, is its biggest challenge yet because not only does it have to take on the car which put EVs on the map for mainstream buyers, the Tesla Model 3, but it's also got to vie for a shrinking share of sedan sales in the Australian market. So what's the deal with the SEAL? And why did BYD choose to name it after an aquatic mammal? Let's take a look. Just like the Model 3, the BYD SEAL arrives in Australia in three variants. The base dynamic, top spec performance, and the one we have for this review, the mid spec premium. Price continues to be BYD's forte. When we shot this video, even this mid spec SEAL undercuts the entry level Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive, starting from a smidge under $60,000. It even offers more range and more power from its electric motor too. The Premium gets the larger of the two battery options in the SEAL range, allowing a WLTP certified cruising range of 570 kilometres, which is one of the longest cruising ranges of any electric vehicle on sale in Australia right now. The list of standard equipment is also ridiculously long. Check out our written review for the exhaustive list, but the highlights include LED headlights, 19-inch alloy wheels, a 10.25-inch digital instrument cluster, a massive 15.6-inch multimedia touchscreen with wired Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto connectivity, leather seat trim with 8-way power adjust for the driver, ventilated and heated front seats, dual wireless phone chargers and dual-zone climate control. The only options are premium paints and a light blue theme for the interior, both are priced at $1,500 each. The SEAL also gets a solid array of active safety features, but more on that later. Now here's one area where BYD has learnt from its previous mistakes, because these tyres don't say Giddy, they don't say Atlas Batman, they do say Continental, which is a proper tyre for a proper car, and should make this thing handle much better. Why is it called a SEAL? Well, unlike the Addo 3, this sedan and the Dolphin Hatch belong to BYD's ocean-themed sub-brand in its home market of China. The whole SEAL package looks and feels pretty comprehensive and would even be pretty impressive for a combustion car at this price. But there are a handful of areas where you can see through the facade. For example, the software looks okay initially, but it's pretty blatantly a simple Android reskin when you get up close with it. Sure, it's still miles ahead of a lot of its Chinese contemporaries in this department, but it is one area where it takes a swipe at Tesla's massive central touchscreen, and it misses. Isn't it an impressive looking vehicle though? I really do think it is a really modern take on the classic three box sedan silhouette. It's low, it's curvy, it's sporty, and I really think the design highlights offer a bit of a maximalist take compared to the sort of minimalism of the Model 3 or the Polestar 2 with which it competes. I don't think that's a bad thing though, I actually think it offers something different in this EV space. I'm particularly impressed by its low slung side profile and tastefully executed boot lid and tail lights. It doesn't give off the vibe of a cut price Chinese car at all and this is maybe one of the most impressive things about BYD as a brand. It feels either on or almost at the level of a much more established automaker. Inside there are elements which are equally impressive, but I also think it wears too many of its influences on its sleeve. Now, first impressions of the SEAL cabin are really, really good. It's super plush in here, and there are some great design touches. First up, I'll start with these seats. They're really plush. You sink into them. They've got these awesome kind of throne designs with really intricate kind of patterning on them. And instead of straight up synthetic leather, like a lot of Chinese cars, they're a blend of real leather and synthetic leather called genuine leather. Anyway, not only does it have that, but those Trims extend throughout this interior to pretty much everything your arms and knees are going to touch. So it does feel nice and soft and well cladded in this interior. And there are some also different materials. There's like an Alcantara through this door as well. Design touches, which I think are really clever, include these door handle and speaker pieces, which are like a seal flipper in reference to this car's namesake. And I like that because it's such a bespoke piece. Like it's not an off the shelf speaker and an off the shelf door handle. It's something specifically made for this car. And I think that's something that BYD is really quite good at actually, whether you like the kind of corny design elements or not, but I think they're tastefully executed in here too. 
Now, one area that I'm not so keen on is where this car wears its influences on its sleeve a little bit too much. That digital dash in there is looking very Mercedes influenced and this little crystal style shifter in here is looking a little bit Volvo. And of course, that dual uh, charging pad there and the screen is very Tesla. And the thing is, the software doesn't quite match the promise. Once you dig into this screen, yes, it's like straightforward, it looks quite good, it's quite fast to react, but in behind it, once you go through a couple of the menus, it becomes quite clear that it is just an Android reskin. It's better than a lot of the software on the market, to be fair, but you know, I, I expect better from a car where the screen is such a core element of the experience. Now, of course, like any BYD, it does have the rotating screen feature. Hey, you might like this, but my issue with it is Apple CarPlay in particular doesn't actually work when the screen is rotated, which is a bit of a blemish on its design. And I find that most of the screens are actually better in that widescreen view. So look, it's kind of cool, but I'd prefer it if it was just a normal screen, to be honest. The dual uh, wireless chargers is a great touch. And when we start talking about practicality, this car, of course, also has lots of storage. There's a huge pass through under this bridge console here. There's two cup holders and you can actually push down one of them so it can take a larger bottle as well. And in this center console box, there's also a massive space in there alongside a large bottle holder in the doors as well. Let's go take a look in that back seat. Okay, back seat of the seal. Wow, look at that. Look at the amount of room between my knees and that seat in front. That is enormous. I very rarely get this much room, even in large SUVs or people movers. So that's really impressive. It does come at a little bit of a cost when we analyze the boot, which we'll look at later. But can you tell that in China, a lot of sedans are meant for being driven in rather than drive yourself? I think this is kind of really emblematic of that. Anyway, it's also really comfortable back here because the seats kind of tilt back a lot. So you sort of slide back into them and that gives you even more room. The floor is nice and flat. So this middle position should be useful for a full-sized adult as well. And like a lot of electric cars, you do get that big fixed panoramic roof. It's got a heavy tint on it, this one, but there's also a fold-out cover you can get instead of the usual retracting cover. And a lot of manufacturers, while well, they're struggling to get them like Tesla and Polestar for their glass roofs, because normally those glass roofs really cook the interior of cars in Australia so it's nice to have. Uh, elsewhere let's talk about storage so we've got a large bottle holder in the doors there and there's a drop down one with two different sized ones so you can fit a wide cup and a short one that's a nice touch and again that nice soft trim is on there as well there are different shaped pockets on the backs of the front seats dual adjustable air vents a weird little tray i'm not sure what that's useful for i actually have to reach really far here because that's how much room there is there's a little flip out tray with your usb ports in there as well to provide charging for rear seat passengers so this is a stellar back seat really really good i'm impressed i've even got heaps of headroom Okay, the boot. Now, under here is 400 litres, which sounds pretty good, but this is one of the issues with buying a sedan because not only is that load area a bit limited, but once you split that Cars Guide luggage set out into its three pieces, you can't actually fit it in here. You could if it was 400 litres in an SUV, for example, at least most of the time. Now, under the floor here, there is a little area for storing your charging cables, which is really useful, but then under that, there's only a repair kit and not a spare wheel, which is a bit of a shame. The amount of luggage capacity on offer is also bolstered by an additional 50 litres for the frunk. Each SEAL variant gets its own drivetrain and this mid-spec premium we've been testing gets 230 kilowatts and 360 newton meters driving those rear wheels. On paper, it's slightly more than the Model 3 and slightly less than the Polestar 2. Providing juice for its electric motor is an 82.56 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery using BYD's signature weight and space-saving blade format and LFP chemistry. When it comes to charging, the SEAL Premium can top up on a DC fast charger at a maximum rate of 150 kilowatts for a 10 to 80% charge time in 37 minutes. While on AC, it's a disappointing 7 kilowatts, making it hardly worth plugging in to a public slow charger location when you visit the shops, as you'll only get about 50 kilometers of range an hour. It's for this reason that most cars which have batteries this big offer 11 kilowatt AC charging. Unlike the Model 3 or Polestar 2 though, the SEAL does come equipped with a V2L system, allowing you to power household appliances from its charging port. 
Claimed energy consumption for the seal is 14.6 kilowatt hours to 100 kilometers, and that's about what we saw on test too. Okay, now I must admit that I underestimated the seal when I first hopped in it. I didn't think it would be anywhere near as good as it actually is. And this is because the BYDs I've driven before, the Atto 3 and the Dolphin, while they were good, they weren't a huge step above a mainstream automaker. They maybe were not quite there yet, but this car is something really quite impressive. It's as though BYD had something that they really had to prove when they were building it. And it's a good thing too, because unlike a hatchback or a midsize SUV, picking a sedan in today's market is really a deliberate choice. You're buying something because you want it to be sportier, lower to the ground and you're looking for that more keen drive experience. And that starts with the steering tune, which is quite tight and engaging. It's a little artificial, but then a lot of cars in this segment are too. Things like the Tesla Model 3, that has quite an artificial steering tune, and so do a lot of the Hyundai and Kia products. So that's not unusual, and it does take a little edge off the steering. It could be better. It could be like the Polestar 2 steering, for example. But I do think the steering on offer here is pretty good. It strikes a good middle ground of being easy to turn in low speeds, but also having your back in the corners. Speaking of tipping it into corners as well, while the steering does have a little bit of that kind of artificial feel, one thing that is most impressive is the level of grip on offer. Now, this was a real weak point for the other two BYD models, and that was largely down to their suboptimal tires but on here you've got a long wheelbase this car is nice and wide and you've got continental tires on it as well at least in this mid-spec premium form and it really shows this is an impressive car when you throw it aggressively at some tarmac now in terms of power while it does seem to stand up at least on paper compared to the pulsar 2 and model 3 i gotta say it doesn't feel quite as fast once you get it on the road the accelerator responses may be a little dull compared to those two rivals, but once you notch it down into sport mode and throw it into a couple of corners, it's really quite impressive. And this brings us to maybe what is the most impressive part of the SEAL's drive experience, and that's its ride. While the Polestar 2 and the Model 3 are renowned for how firm they are on the road, even in their improved updated forms, the SEAL has the best ride out of all of them. It's got a nice soft damper tune, but with springs that are firm enough to control the weight of those batteries under the floor. In fact, it reminds me a lot of the Mustang Mach-E, which has a very similar kind of suspension tune going on. And that does mean it does have a couple of little downsides, like it does have a bit of secondary jiggle when you hit a big bump, which is notable in the cabin. There's a little bit of busyness, but this is a really impressive ride for such a low slung car with the weight of those batteries under the floor. So I'm really impressed by that about the seal and it's gonna make it a much more comfortable car to live with day to day. It's also notably really quiet in this cabin. There's not a whole lot of tire noise even. So while I think it does wear its influences on its sleeve when it comes to that kind of luxury look in the cabin, it really does back it with some nice sound deadening in here. This is a quiet, refined vehicle to drive. It's much more impressive than I was expecting it to be in so many ways. So there you have it, the BYD Seal driving experience. I must admit that I didn't expect it to be this good. This is beyond just a good Chinese car. This sedan is now ready to cut the grass of mainstream automakers and it's doing it in such a spectacular way. Another thing that I quite like about the SEAL is the active safety suite because while it's one thing to tick all of the boxes to have all of those key active safety items, it's quite another to calibrate them and not have them interfere with the drive experience. And for the most part, that's what's happening here. I found that the lane keep system is a great example. It doesn't interfere much, if at all, with the one item that did get in my face a little bit being the overspeed warning because sometimes it picks the wrong speed limit for the road and then incessantly beeps at you. Other than that though, it's pretty good. I will say that the active cruise control feature is not as good as the one in this car's Tesla competitor. It doesn't keep its lane as well, it doesn't keep its distance as well, and so a little calibration is needed there. It's like a regular kind of adaptive cruise suite rather than something a little bit more impressive, which is genuinely what you get in those Teslas.
The SEAL is equipped with seven airbags, including a front center airbag, and it received a maximum five-star ANCAP rating in 2023. The long-term ownership prospects are a bit of a mystery for BYD, as the brand is yet to put runs on the board in Australia. But if it offers you any peace of mind, the SEAL is offered with a six-year and 150,000 km warranty, with a separate eight-year and 160,000 km warranty for the high-voltage battery. In order to avoid having a traditional dealer network, BYD has partnered with MyCar to fulfill its servicing, which is required once every 12 months or 20,000 km regardless of model or variant. Pricing is fixed for the first eight years and averages out to $299 per annum. Those big auto executives, they've really got reason to be worried because the SEAL is yet another impressive offering from China's most formidable EV automaker. And look, it's not perfect. I think there are some areas where it's trying too hard to be a luxury car. And I think the software does need a little work too, but this car does so much right, I think it'd be hard to be disappointed with one, especially at this price. For more on the SEAL range, check out our full review over at carsguide.com.au.